Welcome back to Retro Rebound. Today, we revisit a long forgotten classic and one that's been highly requested to be discussed on this channel. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Golden Sun. This is a Game Boy Advance exclusive RPG. It's one that's very near and dear to my heart because I discovered it quite late. And today, 20 years later, I'd like to revisit this game and sing the good praises of an excellent RPG series. So if you're new here and you're looking for more retro content, you are in the right place. Be sure to consider subscribing and check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. But before we talk about the actual game, what I wanna do is take you all down memory lane. So as you can see here, I've got my Game Boy Advance inside it. We have Golden Sun sitting right there. But I wanna show you all what it was like getting Golden Sun all those years ago when you got your complete in-box copy. What it looked like. I noticed right away holding this box, just the texture of this Game Boy Advance box is so much different than any other one I personally own. There's like a roughness to it. It's a cardboardy feel compared to the smoothness of others. But that's a stupid side note. Anyway, let's crack this open and see what you got when you ordered Golden Sun. So unfortunately, I don't have one of those slots. As you can see, it's just all tossed in there. It's the only thing I didn't really like about this complete box copy, but it came in such good condition for a great price. I don't really mind it. So as always, you got your uh, Nintendo Power Advance slip. You know, you, you always got to get these inside here. I, I remember seeing these all the time. It's amazing that people preserve these all these years later. But yeah, this was Nintendo's little magazine. Of course, the manual here is the one I love to flip through. These, these were the car ride time killers. Whenever I was buying any new game, you'd learn the game on the way home through these bad boys. And then you'd play the game and you never had to pay attention to any of the tutorials because most of them didn't have it because they had these. But there's artwork in here that I personally really appreciate. It's got all the adepts in the game, which we'll be talking about shortly. And I just love that because it was it was both a instruction manual and of course, just a way to familiarize yourself with the world. So the game didn't have to over explain itself. It's why I think games back then were a lot more natural in their approach to character creation. But the most important thing that I wanted to highlight here that came with Golden Sun was this map. And it also came with a little character sheet we'll look at on the other side, but I thought that this was also really unique. I love when games come with maps. It reminds me of Skyrim, for example. That's a, a recent one that comes to mind immediately as I used to have that hung up on my wall. And again, it's amazing that this is in pristine condition, practically untouched, but you can see the entirety of the world again these are those car ride killers. You'd look at the map, you'd imagine all these different places, and then you got to see them when you got there. And they have everything labeled out. And then if you go to the other side, again, you've got the character and class lists, as, long, as well as the Dejins, the summons, the Psy energy that's available outside of battle, and what it does. It, it effectively caught you up on everything this game was about. And again, I, I, I love this so much. So I just want to take you all down memory lane on what came with some of these games before we actually talk about, of course, Golden Sun itself. So now, let's do that. What is Golden Sun? This game comes from Camelot. Now, while they built themselves as the Golden Sun Studio, what they are known as now is more so the Mario Sports Studio, which is likely a lot more profitable for them. But since 2010, we have not seen a new entry of Golden Sun, but this all began back in 2001 on the Game Boy Advance, and this game was ahead of its time and now with the recently released mario golf super rush we can at least see that they're still doing good work it just may not be the work that we all want so in this game story you're playing as a group of adepts one of them is the main character named isaac now these adepts are people who can use psi energy we'll explain what psi energy is in a little bit but effectively the backdrop to this world is alchemy which allowed the entire planet to be built but now it's causing destruction and people are trying to unseal alchemy so to say and use it for their own will and that's where you and the team of adepts step in as you're trying to stop that and stop the end of the world and of course just like how final fantasy was structured they follow it in a bit of a one-to-one -one template where you're trying to prevent the collection of said crystals or in this case elemental stars but what i think for most of us really defined golden sun was its gameplay and if you are new to this game from battle one you can immediately tell why it's a special RPG. The camera angle to me was the most impactful choice of combat because it puts the sprite work on full display. It's 
absolutely gorgeous. From when you're roaming the overworld to combat in general, it's just incredible. Of course, the effects are a major component of all of this. The effects works for all the different spells you can cast look beautiful. The amount of animation work that is packed into, again, this 2001 Game Boy Advance game is nothing short of a true accomplishment even to this day. But at its core, it's a standard, quite familiar turn-based RPG. One of the most defining factors of Golden Sun are the Dijins. So what are these Dijins? I mentioned Psy Energy, and they're a component of that. Dijins are made of pure Psy Energy, like they're clusters of it. And you can equip these on any of your party members. What I like about these is we talked about Battle Network a couple of videos ago and how you had chips that would define your character build. Think of it that way, where this is like the master chip of them all, and you would equip it onto your character. Now, each Dijin mimics an element within the world, whether it be Venus, which is Earth, Mars, which is fire, Jupiter, which is wind, or Mercury, which is water. And upon equip, it would alter those stats, which allowed you to disrupt the class structure that we saw on the back of this map here. And I thought that was something that was really neat and quite different for its time, by the way. There's a actual flexibility in the builds you could do in Golden Sun. And not only that, of course, you had to factor in things like being able to put on equipment and what that would do for your character. But it wasn't just another piece of equipment. Dijins also served a purpose in gameplay where they were these game-changing spells. So it was actually quite worthwhile to go way out of your way to find these Dijins, to collect them around the overworld, experiment with them, see which of them worked with what. And it created this amazing class structure that Everyone had their own set roles, like Garrett, for example, was a tank, he did a lot of damage, clear melee user, but you could really tweak things. And again, with the experience in the early 2000s, there really aren't many games that you can think of on a little handheld console like this that were doing something like that. What is Psy Energy? Think of it as magic. It's just that simple. It's just another name for magic. What's cool about it, though, is beyond the spells you can use in combat, is that there's an out of combat use. And that was a core pillar of design, it seems, for Golden Sun, was for everything you could do within combat, it would affect things out of combat. So we talked about with the Dijins, where you would alter your class structure completely, and that's all through menus, but then when you're in combat, they did these godlike abilities. Whereas the Psy Energy could be used in combat for your standard spells, but you could also use things like growth, and you could give life to a plant, which would create an entire vine that you would then climb up to get to a new area. You could grab things out of trees. There was so many different ones that you could use and it allowed for puzzles. So this is a puzzle light game. It's never really beaten you over the head with things. And at times it can get a little bit frustrating in Golden Sun when you're trying to figure out a puzzle and you're running around and there are random encounters. That's where it starts to show its age a little bit, but most of them aren't hard to figure out. And a lot of them are satisfying because of the Psy energy. And again, it's another system that bends, but never quite breaks. And I like it so much for that. But the dungeons themselves are about as standard as you could expect in RPGs. You go through your caves, your tunnels, but then there are cool ones like the lighthouse, which I thought was a standout personally. But with that comes a caveat. This game does not guide you all that much through your experience. This is where, again, the age can crop up sometimes. So let's say you've played a lot of Golden Sun, like myself. You stop playing it, life catches up to you, things happen, you pick the game back up. Where was I? There isn't any type of quest log or reminder. You've got to figure it back out or hope that you saved in the right place where all you had to do was interact with one person and boom, you're back on your way. So oftentimes I would get lost. I remember specifically in this game, there was one quest where you had to grab water from the fountain that was at the lighthouse and you had to bring it back to this ancient tree in the Kalima forest. The game really didn't spell it out for you. Let's just put it that way. And it isn't until you look up a guide online that you go, huh, how did anyone ever figure that out? And there are some moments like that peppered throughout this series as there are many older games doing the same thing. So just keep in mind that while Golden Sun is phenomenal, it's not immune to some of its age. But despite all of that, going back to it for today's video, I found myself falling in love with it again. It's such a special game 
coming out at a time where it was doing things that we never really quite saw too often on such a small device. This goes also into the overworld. So Golden Sun was in my eyes, as someone who played it very late, accomplishing things that other games were on console a couple of years prior. So to move into something tinier on handheld and have that experience, it kind of reminds me of how we felt with the Switch where you got something like say The Witcher 3 on Switch where it was doing that on consoles. And when I say consoles, I'm talking like the PlayStation, the Xbox where Switch is more of a hybrid. You get what I'm saying though, is it provided that feeling of we're getting these console-like experiences on the go. So when you're roaming this overworld, and there's all these different places to go and there's locations and when you go into those locations like a town you can interact with people sleep at the inn buy items all that good stuff pick up quests again very ahead of its time what's unfortunate is we haven't seen anything since golden sun has been dormant since 2010 when it launched dark dawn on the nintendo ds so in the meantime we'll certainly revisit other entries of golden sun here on this channel but now Camelot, as I said, is very busy with the Mario sports games. I can only hope that one day they go back and remaster, re-release, or even remake Golden Sun. Because I think a new audience would really appreciate it. And 20 years later, it seems like it's time after the first Golden Sun. Not only that, but when you see Nintendo openly bringing back the likes of Advance Wars, another classic here on the Game Boy Advance, you have to wonder to yourself, what other games are they looking at in their catalog that have been dormant? Especially with Camelot still around, you have to hope that they look into returning to it at some point in time. But until then, we'll have to be extremely patient. So with that, I leave you with my thoughts on Golden Sun in 2021. It's been a very long while since a lot of us have played it. So do you have any fond memories of Golden Sun that you'd like to share? Go for it in the comments down below and I hope unboxing it in front of you brought you on a nice nostalgia trip. With that, take good care of yourselves, and I'll talk with all of you very soon in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.